We're talking about classics today. And yeah, them are classics, but this is one you can eat. Hamburger steak and gravy don't get no better than that. An old classic today. No, not me and the beak. I'm talking about a hamburger steak with that good brown onion gravy that goes on top. My mother used to treat us to this on a lot of special occasions when she'd set this on the table because when we could pair this with biscuits and gravy and mashed potatoes, man, we thought we was eating high on the hog. We did. And it's really simple. You just got to start out with good meat and get things to going and I think we ought to start. So we have about a pound and a half of 80-20 ground chuck. Remember from a previous video, I told you if you're gonna get ground meat, great, make sure it is ground chuck. And 80-20, we need the fat. So we have four garlic cloves that is minced right here. We're gonna go ahead and just dump in there. Shan said them onions were in the state of Nevada of her honor, they are. And they are what I would call what, Shan? Finely chopped. Finely chopped. Now go ahead and put them in there. And we're gonna go ahead and mix that a little by hand, we are, just to get everything sort of started and incorporated well. Hi, Big. Yes, this is beef, but Big, the beef has onion in it. So, sorry, buddy, you're out of luck right now, you are. We gotta have some, as what Justin Wilson said, Leon Perrin's W sauce makes everything better. We're gonna go about that much on it. Now, my mother, bless her heart, I loved her so, and she was a great cook. This would be about as far as she went, and then she might put some salt and pepper in it. Now, we're gonna come in there with some of our original seasoning and season it, but then we're gonna add just a little bit more black pepper to it. I've fixed this on ranches before I have many times for cowboys, especially on days where I knew they'd had a long morning, and I'm thinking, you know, that old classic hamburger steak would be really good. And to me, this just makes it better, folks. And that is some of that there. Oh my gosh. Parmesan cheese grated in the little plastic bottle. If we can get in it. Now we're gonna add about three fourths to a cup. Don't be afraid to go overboard. You'll be all right. We just need to mix it really good. The Parmesan cheese really sort of acts as a binding agent too, which is gonna bring it all together. We're gonna grate us some butter right in here in it, we are. Just keep running her down through there. Why are you grating it? Because it's it incorporates. It's actually shred. Because it incorporates into the meat better. Huh. That way all the meat will get that buttery taste to it. All right, let's go to mixing it one last time. Make sure that everybody's got some of that love. You don't see no Parmesan cheese laying around down in there loose. This is a pound and a half, so I know we're gonna at least get four out of here. So get them in a ball pretty good shape and we're just going to see that we get pretty well four equal balls before we go any further so get these in a shape that you want you can make them as thick or as thin oblong square rectangle i don't care but you can see the butter and the Parmesan in each one of them. It's that time I'll meet you over at Bertha and we'll get them to go. Hot it is over here by Bertha. In goes the rest of that butter that was three fourths a stick. We're gonna use the rest of it right in here. Let it get hot. I would say you'd be about a medium heat. While that butter is melting right along, let's go ahead and put these in there. This is what you call a one pot meal too, so there's not a whole lot of dishwashing, which Sometimes I like, but the beagle and major ain't too much for. We're gonna brown these and get nearly plumb done before we ever take them out of there. So ground beef temperature is about 140 when you're pan frying something like this. And we're gonna cook them a little under that because when they go back in the gravy and everything that goes with it, they'll be done just right. One of the first ranches that I was cooking on was the Silverbrook Ranch down there south of Abilene. And uh, they used their wagon and their team, which was probably the worst team I ever drove in my life, uh, but also, them boys are each out of house and home. Usually a crew for me was something like maybe 10 to 12 people, 13. Down there it was like 17 to 25. It was sort of some one of them surprises most days. And the first meal in at noon, you know, I like to have a chicken fried steak, gravy, mashed potatoes, all that stuff. And uh, there was a bunch of old timers in the crew. 
and they was talking about classics and about old classic horses and classic movies that they'd seen through the years. And I'm thinking, tomorrow we're gonna break out a classic just for them old men. And uh, I remember, cause they furnished the beef and that day they told me there'd be about five extra for lunch. So we was cooking for about 26. Well, I cook about 10 pounds of meat and I made some of the biggest hamburger steaks I believe I ever made in my life. That's probably this big around, about that thick. Put them in that old 20 inch skillet and cook them down to where that's just right. And then when them boys come in there and I just poured that gravy over the top of that meat and just let it go to bubbling in there. And you never seen any old timer in your life that would come under the fly of the wagon and ask you what was going on or what was happening. But I remember old Ed's was just sort of like an old gooseneck just reaching way over as far as he could. And I hear him tell one of them others, that looks like hamburger steak and gravy right there. I hope he's got some mashed taters to go with it. Well, I filled them boys up so much that day when they got through eating, they were gonna go back as soon as they did after lunch. But I remember old Ed tell them, hang on, we're just gonna sit here and wait till that settles. They got to camp at 12, they left at 2.30. That's what you call filling them up and making them do it right. Now you can see as we were flipping them that some of them tried to want to fall apart. That's that Parmesan cheese and all that stuff that's getting really good and tender in there and it just wants to just break out. But if you'll make these, chill them in the icebox about 30, 45 minutes ahead of time before you do this, you won't have no trouble at all. Well, meat is done, it is. I done sliced me up a white onion. We need to get it in there so it can cook. Now, you remember we put that rest of that leftover butter in there that we had? That's gonna help them onions too as it goes along there with that meat grease. So we're gonna let these cook till they get pretty good translucent and pretty soft and then we'll add the rest of the gravy making to it. As them onions is simmering right along over on Bertha, you got to have gravy with this. And we're gonna use half and half, that's what's in my recipe. And it is about a cup of half and half, which is about half of this jug right here. So that's about that much. To that, some more of that there W sauce cause you gotta have it. Justin Wilson would be proud, he would. We're gonna add a little garlic powder and a little onion powder. And to that, a cup of beef broth. Gonna add that gravy to that onion mixture over there, stir it up and let it come to a really good simmer to where it's boiling a little bit. And then we're gonna add some cornstarch, which is just cold water and cornstarch cause we need a thickening agent. And we're gonna let that cook till it gets thick. Then we're gonna add our hamburger steaks back to it. And we're gonna try to just let them come to a low slimmer, slimmer, slimmer. That was not a word. Nope. We're gonna let it come to a low simmer and just sit there and just sort of all them flavors blended together for about 10 to 15 minutes. And then we're gonna eat it. That dog will hunt right there. I'm telling you, that is a fine meal. I have served that to many cowboys I have, but my mother, like I said, graced it on our table so many times. And really my way of serving it is like I did. I dish the potatoes down there first, then a layer of gravy, then the meat, then more gravy, because you can't never go wrong with gravy. You can also bake this dish when you get that hamburger meat and everything done and put it back in that gravy. If you wanna slide it in the oven and let it bake for 15, 20 minutes, you can. And it's a great dish that if you wanna cook in a Dutch oven because it's so easy to cook, you can see the top and the bottom, everything is good to go. But me, I'm gonna have a bite. It's gonna be good, big. Mm -hmm. 
thank you mama so much sugar for putting that on our table so many times this is probably one of the better classic meals that I think that I've ever eaten in my life because it just brings back a flood of memories from, from old cowboys to sitting at my mother's table to having this in cafes so many years ago. I had some really good help today. Where are they at? Mage, are you here? We're going to have some potatoes. Mage says, I didn't know we was having potatoes. Big Big said, I really don't like potatoes. He doesn't like potatoes? It's one of the few things I've never seen him eat. And broccoli. Lou says she doesn't mind. Big, would you like if it had a little gravy on it, Big? Oh, maybe not. Maybe if it had just a little bit of gravy. There ain't no onions in there. How would you like that? Look, you've had yours. Big said, I don't mind them if they got gravy. Be sure and check out that events page because we got some good times coming up. We do. Ritz Theater over there in Wellington, Texas, March 29th. Me and the Cleverleys are going to be doing a show, but y'all going to get to eat a meal that we prepared. And hey, I'm just going to go ahead and just give you a tip right now. Big old center cut pork chop. Mm-mm. Going to be good it is. We appreciate you. We really do. Y'all are family to me and Shan and all the pups. And let's make this world a better place. And uh, let's be a better friend and a better neighbor to each and every one out there. But it is with pride, honor, and privilege that I take my hat off to all the veterans, the servicemen, and the women, all those folks keeping that old flag of flying over camp. We commend you all. We do. Rest of you get on up in here quick, because this old classic is fitting to eat this classic. It is. <laughs> Big hug. God bless you each and every one, and I'll see you down the best hamburger steak trail ever. Gosh, howdy, duty, fruity, tootie. Why do you always put on gloves? Because they hamburger meat gets under my wedding ring. Oh, really? Well, I think it was 1993, one of the first ranches that I'd cooked on the Silver Book. Starting over. <laughs>